Hello and welcome to Atlantic Debrief, the Atlantic Council Europe Center's internet show and podcast on the most pressing issues impacting transatlantic relations today. My name is Jan Fleck. I'm the Senior Director of the Europe Center, and I'm delighted to have back with us Ambassador Gérard Arrault, the uh, former French ambassador to the United States and a distinguished fellow here with us at the Europe Center. Warm welcome back, Ambassador Raoul. Good afternoon from Paris. Uh, we had you on last week to discuss the first round. And even before that, you gave us a preview of the SNAP elections. It's, it's great to have you back now to discuss the outcome of the final round, the second round of the French elections with which parliamentary elections which brought quite a surprise outcome here that that very few people expected the leftist alliance of the new popular front came in first president macron's ensemble a party and alliance came in second place in the elections and the national rally that had been projected to have even a majority uh, uh, an absolute majority perhaps within reach only came in in third place. Still, none of the three players achieved a, an absolute majority or even a significant relative majority. And so the questions are how France, how President Macron can now form a government in France with these parliamentary uh, balances of power. And so there's a lot to unpack with Ambassador And I'd like to jump right in with you and and really start with the surprise outcome. What do you think drove this this significant change from what everyone was expecting, from what pollsters had also suggested and projected in this? What were the key drivers behind the surprise outcome? Yes, hi, John. Yes, uh, on the basis of the results of the first round, I think on Sunday night after the first round, uh, people were believed that actually the national rally, the far right party, was on its way of having a majority or being able to to form a government with the support of the conservatives. The surprise was, I guess, had, was in two stages. The first stage was between the two rounds. You know, in the French system, uh, parties are allowed to run for the second round if the candidates are really allowed to run for the second round, if they got more than 12.5% of the votes in the first round, which means that usually in our second rounds, we have three, at the very maximum, four candidates, but really usually three candidates. And in these cases, on the basis of the first round, you, we could expect hundreds of uh, what the French call triangulaire, triangular, which means a really a second rounds with three candidates, a centrist, a far right, and a, a leftist. And and on the basis, basis of the of the first round, the consequence was clearly that the far right was going to win a lot of constituencies. And what happened was really that a lot of actually of candidates, leftist or centrist, decided to step out uh, from the race and to call their voters to vote for either the centrist or the leftist to prevent uh, the far right from winning the constituency. And it was really a, a general a movement, a very a general movement. So we went from really something like four, nearly 400 uh, triangular, triangular uh, second rounds to uh, more or less only uh, more or less 95, 100. And, and in, this, in these cases of this 100, actually, uh, the centrist and the leftist remain in the, in the race most of the time because there was no ch danger of a victory of the far right. So that was the first surprise because, you know, we have had for the last decades what we call the, the national, the Republican front, uh, where leftist and centrist are allied against the far right. But the general, feeling was that it didn't work anymore, that more a little by little the far right party, the national rally, had succeeded to get uh, to become a sort of a normal party uh, for the public uh, for the public opinion. Uh, apparently uh, uh, it was not the case. So pollsters were doubtful that the voters we follow 
uh, the calls uh, to 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 stop the far uh, the the Fahite, the pollsters were wrong. That's the first surprise on on a Sunday night, yesterday night, you know, really, uh, was that actually the French said no to a Fahite government, and that was really quite a surprise. It's without any ambiguity. It's a no. Still, there is still a Republican front uniting people, very different people, uh, from the from the far left to the center right. We simply said, no way, we don't want the, the far right. So it means also that you can say that it's a bit an artificial, uh, it's a bit artificial because we have had very different people voting together for the only reason to stop the far right. So, uh, so you have immediately two remarks of, it means that really, but at the, really, this front worked. It's true. But it, it really, in a lot of cases, it hardly worked, which means that they got the, the far, the, they got 40, 51, 52% of the votes and the Fahid got 48%. So it means that a little, really, uh, little by little, the Fahid is, is going up. And what, hap- what will happen in the next uh, election? The second point is that you can argue that in the, again, I am relieved to uh, really to, to not to have a far right majority this morning. But at the same time, uh, you can say in democratic terms, uh, it's not very healthy that to, to have people who have nothing in common voting together only to prevent uh, another party from winning, you know, really. So it's not a debate of ideas. It's not a debate of really of com- co- common uh, common vision. It's simply a, a common no. And uh, so, uh, so that's really, in a sense, is breeding a feeling of really unsatisfaction, even if we are, we love, we love the, I do love the, the result. After that, as you have perfectly said, uh, we are now a country basically with three unequal blocks in the National Assembly. Uh, the, the left, 190, uh, the center with the president's party, 160, and the far, the far right, 140. You know, so it means that there is no majority possible in the parliament. And, uh, so what immediately all the English-speaking people are going to say, oh, wow, you are going to make coalition, compromise. But, you know, they have to understand that the, the, that the French political culture is much more oriented towards a guillotine than towards compromise. And so we, we don't like, really frankly, uh, we don't like compromise, we don't like coalition. Uh, we don't have this experience. We have not had really this experience for for decades, so in in itself, it's it's difficult. On the top of that, you have the question mark of the leftist coalition, who was who, which is now the first one uh, in the parliament. Hardly, but it is the first one in the parliament because the it's a, the leftist bloc, the new Popular Front, is itself a coalition, and within this coalition, you have a far left uh, party. Uh, led by Mr. Mélenchon, and, and Mr. Mélenchon, uh, five minutes after the result yesterday night, Sunday night, simply said, uh, you know, in other words, more or less, I want to be the prime minister and to implement my program, uh, to all my program, you know, really, and I am against any concession, any compromise, any coalition. If uh, I can maybe oh. ju- jump in in there, because you already raised my two next questions. One, you know, what what will be the outlook for this hung parliament? You said yourself, you know, outside observers will immediately go into, okay, coalition mode, but that's not really a tradition in at least recent French political culture. So what we can, we, can we expect on that? And then I want to come back to your point about this leftist coalition and how durable that that really is and that's that's the main question the the because during the electoral campaign uh the electoral campaign has shown the fragility and the division of the left the leftist coalition between the the far left of Mélenchon which is called la France insoumise uh, LFI 
and uh, which is very radical and which has, in a very strange way, centered its campaign on the on the Gaza uh, on the ga- on the on Gaza, you know, really, which is a way of tra- attracting uh, the Muslim voters. Um, and uh, on the other, uh, but you have also the traditional socialist party, who, uh, which is reviving because in this uh, in this election and which is much more moderate. And uh, so the question will be: I think the first question will be whether the the, the leftist coalition is going to remain to remain united. Um, if it doesn't remain united, um, is it possible to have a coalition between the traditional left and the center, the presidential center? You won't get a majority still. Uh, is it possible to 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 extend this majority to the traditional conservatives? I think it would be very difficult for the left, for the socialists to 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 accept it. So, frankly, uh, again, we are going to see. To, we have ahead of us weeks and maybe months of negotiations, of squabbles, of door slammed, um, of melodrama, political melodrama. And the French are very good at poli- political melodrama. With a lot of principles, will be uh, really uh, screened. Uh, even if there will be actually there would be uh, a lot of negotiations uh, behind the behind the curtains, so it will be we are entering on the short term a crisis, uh, and there, and there is the big question of course of Macron the president because the president can appoint whoever he wants as prime minister uh, in our system because. Uh, a prime minister does not need to be supported by the majority of the parliament. Actually, the previous prime minister was not did a, was not supported by a majority of the parliament. He simply uh, doesn't have to be opposed by a majority of the parliament, which is quite different because it obliged uh, different parties, and uh, in this case, it will be the, the the left and the far right to vote against together against uh, the prime minister. And in the previous uh, chamber, they didn't do it. So, so there will be the game. Really, what will be the game of the president? Is he going to try to keep the prime minister, the current prime minister? I don't think so, because the prime minister himself has said that he wants to leave, and uh, because there is a, a crisis also within uh, the presidential party, because all the presidential party has been more or less disapproving. The decision of Macron to 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 call for this snap elections. So there is a crisis in the Macronist uh, the Macronist camp. Uh, is he going to appoint a, a prime minister out of the parliament? Is you know really? So there is a lot a lot of question marks in the com- in the coming weeks, and and there will be a lot of uh, as we say in French, and you may understand in English, a lot of cuisine. Uh, really, and it won't be haute cuisine. It will be it will be very basic uh, cuisine and negotiations. You know, really, everybody is is go- really that's the coming the coming weeks. We can be without a mini- a government, a functioning government for months. You know, really, uh, like the the Dutch or like the Belgians, uh, really. But it, and but in any case, even if we have a sort of a government, which could be only a weak government, resulting from really a sort of, uh, uh, really frankly, a, an arrangement without any strong basis, I suspect that the country will go. Uh, it would be a very bumpy road, and and at the end, today, <laughs> most of the people are te- will tell you, oh, the French will vote again in June twenty twenty five. Because you know we have to wait, to wait twelve months uh, before uh, a new uh, a new snap election. So to conclude, and in a way, I think I concluded the same way last week. France is entering a long uh, a long crisis. It's highly unlikely that it will have a functioning government, which means a government able to take strong decisions uh, in the coming uh, in the coming in in the coming year. On that point, um, two two questions. First, on the foreign policy, on the European Union policy front, how would that paralysis affect France's voice at the European level and international level? I mean, we know the president has some extraordinary powers, but with his credibility challenge, can he 
simply exercise those? Do you see President Macron focusing uh, uh, on foreign policy as a as a as an escape from the domestic politics in many ways? No, first I think in a sense it 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 pre, it avoids uh, a major really crisis potential crisis that we we would have had with the far right. First one on Ukraine. Because the far right wanted to uh, to limit the military support that France is 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 providing to Ukraine, especially uh, for forbidding, preventing French soldiers from going to Ukraine, and uh, also uh, plane planes being delivered to Ukraine. Uh, a second crisis, potential crisis, was the question of immigration, which would have really. Um, Set a very difficult, very very serious crisis with the countries of the Maghreb and on the on the of Francophone Africa, and of course le- third crisis uh, the European Union, uh, really because the far right was uh, uh, an eurosceptic uh, was eurosceptical was in a sense close between Meloni and Orban, so really so that's really in a sense we are we have cleared the way. For at least for the coming weeks and months, from from these expected problems, on the to answer more precisely to your question, well, I think in any case Macron will want to show that he is still in charge of French foreign policy, uh, but seen from outside, I suspect that uh, his credibility will be really weakened because he will not be representing a government or the country. Uh, he will be seen uh, outside uh, outside uh, France. He will be seen as 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 in you know, a sort of a lame duck. Uh, also, don't forget that we have elections, in, a presidential elections, in any way in three years, and he will not allow he will not be allowed to run again. And on the top of that, he, he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have the majority, and he will be obliged uh, to uh, really uh, to try to find a way to to have a. As I have said, a sort of a functioning government, it, and it won't be easy. And and I, as I have said on the crisis within the presidential camp, uh, there is a, a general feeling in France which is anti-Macron. Really, uh, it's as I have said, it's not only uh, the far right; it's not only the left. You know, really, before these elections, there was. In maybe an unf- in an unfair way, there was a feeling of hostility and verging to verging to hatred against Emmanuel Macron uh, in the public opinion. Really, frankly, and, and again, I I voted for him, and I think it's it's unfair, but it's a case. It's it's clear that he has not succeeded to build a relationship with the with the common the common man with the people in the street and. They say that he has been re-elected in 2022, but there is really a feeling that he, he doesn't understand the life of the normal people, that he's arrogant, and and so on. And on the top of that, you have had this decision of uh, calling snap elections, which have been which has been read as a suicide by members of his party, even members of the government uh, who were not consulted, who were totally taken aback by why they considered as an absurd and absurd decision, which has led uh, really many ministers, and it's not in a French system, it's very unusual, and the prime minister to say very publicly that they disagreed uh, with uh, with Macron. So there will be the question of of Emmanuel Macron whether he will understand that, or and I doubt it, uh, and whether he will be able to handle a very very delicate situation. Uh, really, negotiation between parties uh, and uh, with this hostility, uh, personal hostility against him, whether he will he will understand that he has to be quote unquote a bit presidential. He has to be less involved into uh, I should say the daily management of politics. Uh, we have already had a sort of situation, comparable situation, in '93. Uh, with Mitterrand and in 97 with Chirac. And Mitterrand and Chirac, their first reaction after their defeat was, uh, as I said, to be silent, uh, not to interfere into the management of the daily politics of the new government, to become a sort of uh, 
a presidential or even a monarch. You know, the French are the last monarchist in Europe. So really, they were a sort of uh, uh, in. Uh, really a sort of king above the parties. They became uh, really, um, really, I doubt that Macron would be able and willing actually to behave this way. So we, we will have also this question of M Emmanuel Macron really considering his, the, the, the hostility is the target of considering also that it's very likely that he will want to remain involved into politics, which could lead actually into another major crisis uh, in the fall. So again, uh, there is a bumpy road in front of, of France, which means, of course, that France will be, whatever the president really pretends, will be much less uh, influential, active uh, in, the, in the international relations and especially in, foreign, in European politics. So I think it's at a good moment that the UK is back. You know, really, it's a good moment because France is in a really uh, in the crisis. Germany is also, in a sense, uh, weakened right now. So uh, we need Europe needs a leader, but unfortunately, yeah, the UK is not member of the European Union. But that's uh, uh, so. Uh, so welcome back, UK. A, a very short question with hopefully a short answer here. Um, you talked about the leftist camp and the divisions there. You talked about the uh, um, instability potentially in the Macron camp. Uh, what about the the supposed or projected winner that became the loser of the uh, this second round, the national rally? How will they use this uh, approach, this instability that that you outlined? You know, basically uh, for them. In a sense, really, so the question mark also is why did they lose? And uh, uh, really, in uh, really, so first, as I have said, there is this uh, anti far right, the really this sort of ingrained refusal of the French people of the far right stemming also from, from history. But there is also the fact that this party has never succeeded to be a real party, it's, it's a family endeavor, uh, which means that it's really a Le, Le Pen business. And, uh, you know, it's a party where you don't have a real, uh, real people around Le Pen, but, you know, Monsieur Bardella, uh, Jordan Bardella, but, you know, Jordan Bardella, who is 28, was chosen because he was the boyfriend of a niece of Madame Le Pen. Uh, so it's really a family business. And uh, when you are, well, it is, it's, a na it's a major party. It has been a major party now for some time. And you, when you ask what are the, 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 the main people in this party, and you have two free names, and only the two, f the same three names. And uh, when they really saw, frankly, they, they should have been able to have candidates for a general election. You know, really, again, they have been around for, for decades, and the result was terrifying because we had uh, dozens of candidates who were either uh, totally lunatics or totally stupid, or actually dangerous uh, 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 Nazis, really. And uh, it, it, was, it was amazing, such a amateurism of, of a party. And uh, so that's really, I think it's, the, the, the national rally is not succeeding to overcome, and maybe because Madame Le Pen doesn't want it, this sort of, as I said, a sort of small, uh, uh, so, small uh, really, uh, bakery shop uh, at Le Pen, you know, really, and they don't want to be to re, to be to have to train real uh, uh, real people to train leaders of the party, local leaders. They want to control uh, to be in control of uh, of of everything. Whether they will change, I don't think so. I think that Marine Le Pen, in a sense, I'm not even sure that she's disappointed because her goal is very clearly the presidential elections in 2027. And the danger was that having a, uh, having a government, you know, this government could have uh, really, sh really be totally incompetent uh, because they have nobody, uh, frankly, to, to govern, uh, which would have evidently uh, undermined their candidacy, or to have uh, Bardella becoming a sort of a, a, a rival. Uh, so... You have a Marine Le Pen who can say, you know, I, 
I got 10 millions of voters, 37% of the French voted for us. We had been blocked by um, the alliance of all the, the establishment, or the, what the far right calls the establishment. And of course, this establishment is going to show that it's not able to govern in the coming three years. And she may be right, actually. So in 2027, you know, really, that's time I will, uh, I will win. That's the next showdown. Thank you, Ambassador Rowe, for this really interesting and in-depth unpacking of the election results of the second round of the French parliamentary elections. That's all we have time for right now, but we will, of course, continue to follow the outlook and the political dynamics in Paris for France at the European level here, here at the Europe Center of the Atlantic Council. Thank you again, Ambassador Rowe, for being with us, for helping us understand Uh, the outcome of the elections and thank you to our viewers for tuning in keep looking out for more europe center coverage of french politics and the french elections until then goodbye and thank you very much